Hey guys, happy Friday. I don't know if you can tell. I'm gonna have to get a close up of this. Can you see this? I'm gonna show you something today that you're gonna go, Amy, Amy, why have I not seen this earlier? It's going to revolutionize the way you see your finishes. Now look at this, can you see it? Now, it's done on something that you all have used before. <coughs> There's my puppy dog. Um, you've probably used it before. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Is it fab? Is it so fab? Okay, look at this. Can you see some of the scracking? Thanks for the love. Thank you so much. Oh, it makes me so happy. Look at this. Are you loving it? Do you want to know how to do it? All right, so I've got to make sure, I want to make sure that I get my screen over here situated because I'm going to walk you through how to be able to create this look. Now, if you are catching me live, say, hey, tell me where you're coming in from. Let me get my laptop over here so that way I can see you. How's everybody going? Have you had a good week? Maybe somebody can get this dog to be quiet. We have an office dog and he's, uh, his name is Theo. And if he hears something, there we go. Okay. If he hears something, then he starts barking. But we love, um, we love having a, an office dog. It makes it really sweet. Okay, so say hey when you pop on here. And um, of course, sorry, people are like, why is she talking? Why is she? Jean's trying to get the dog over here in order. Come here. He's not going to. He's not going to. Okay, he's, he's not going to. Jean's being very disruptive. Okay, um, well, hey, baby, well, come over here and say hey. Okay, yeah, you gotta see this, hold on, hold on, hold on, look at this. Can you see, look. <laughs> that's, that's the culprit, it's not just one culprit. It's two culprits. It's Gene Howard and, and Theo Howard. They're just making a, um, a, lot of, a lot of noise. Okay, let me straighten this back up here. Cause, um, I, I, I want you to know, when I have things like this to be able to show you, look at this, I get really excited. Look at this, look at this. Let me hold this up because I want y'all to be able to see this. Can you see the texture from it? I know if there's some shadows and, um, and what you're able to see kind of with the camera. Now, this is so easy to do and it looks like a bazillion bucks. So, you'll be able to create this on nothing else but burlap. Now, let me tell you all the stuff that you can use this on. Years and years ago, I made wallpaper and I would create this wallpaper with plaster and milk paint. Well, hey, is that Deborah? I'm so glad you caught me too. And I would stencil different designs on it, crack it to varying degrees, and would hang it up in people's living rooms, in my living room, guest bath, and look at this. But you can also paint. You can use this, stretch it onto a board and use it as your background that you're gonna put a painting on. You can use this as wallpaper. You can also glue it onto furniture. Who knew? Guys, they've been putting linens and burlaps on furniture for thousands of years. So you can get this look and be able to apply it to it and it looks out of this world. Oh, well, Jan, aren't you just like the sweetest? Oh, welcome to our tribe. We're a group of people that get really excited over doing finishes on things. And so um, y'all are my tribe. I'm really excited to show this to you today. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. And I'm gonna take out a piece of burlap. Plain old burlap. There's nothing special about it. Michelle, where did we get this? Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby had this. Um, you can go to a fabric store, but look, you're gonna see through it. You're gonna see through it. It's just regular old burlap. Now, I like getting this brown color burlap. I like the natural color, kind of the jute. I don't like using the white burlap. So I want you to get the natural jute kind. I'm gonna turn this down because I'm gonna walk you through the steps. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this fast. 
Gretchen, it would be amazing. Guys, no, I'm going to tell you what. You can sew this. You want to talk about expensive pillows? OMG. You can do this as a front to a pillow, lay your stencil down, gild it, crack it, and sell the thing for several hundred dollars. It is absolutely fabulous. Look at this. Can you see? It's fabulous. All right, I just need to quit talking and show you, don't I? Okay, I'm gonna turn this down because I want you to be able to see how to do it. And I wanna make sure that I can see you in my, um, over here on my laptop. So I am working with Venetian plaster. Remember, what is Venetian plaster? It's only three ingredients, guys. The real McCoy Venetian plaster is only three ingredients. It's a combination of what? Marble dust, two, lime, what else? Calcium carbonate. Lime, marble dust, calcium carbonate. That's all it is. So, um, it goes on like butter if it's mixed right. So, it looks like this. It's just in a powder form. You're going to pour it directly out of the bag, and you're going to mix it with warm water to be about the consistency of sour cream. Okay? So, we've done it already. Now, we probably did this just a little bit thicker because um, Michelle was helping me. We were getting this ready, and we want to be able to put it on. So that way you can see. This is probably a little bit thicker, but you you can put it on um, this thick if you want, but I might thin it down just a little bit. For today, we were wanting to get a little bit more coverage. It doesn't take as long. So now I'm right-handed. I'm going to apply, as I'm holding this trowel with my right hand, I'm going to apply it to the left side because that's the part that's going to go on, and I need to clean my trowel. Let me load this up. Hey guys, so as you pop on here, be sure and say hi. Welcome to our finish, finishing tribe. We love all things that we can make a difference and build businesses with it too. Why not learn new finishes and sell furniture and make wallpaper and all that kind of stuff that I'm showing you today. So this is regular natural jute burlap and I'm gonna apply my Venetian plaster like this. Guys, guess what? If you share this video, your name goes in for drawing, and I'm going to give away some Venetian plaster. So all you have to do is share it. Sharing is caring. That way I can keep getting on here and doing these videos to be able to show you how to create all these fab finishes. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit more. Put it on the left side of my trowel. This will not work with all plasters. My plaster is the recipe that's been around for thousands of years. And it's the three ingredients, lime, marble dust, calcium carbonate. And I am just gonna trowel the plaster on here. Now, let me show you. I don't want you to be able to see the fibers in it. I want that completely covered. I don't want you to be able to see the pattern. Some people will have a tendency to put it on too thin and in all actuality, I wish what I had done, what we were showing you today was just a little thicker. But look how this side is thicker. Look how this side is thinner, how I can see the jute. Are you with me? I don't want you to see the texture of it. I want it to be thicker like this. All right, so that way I'm gonna be a lot happier. So you could have this in long sheets. Um, they will usually come, you could have it to where it was 38 inches wide. Sometimes it's 42 inches wide. Um, and you can make wallpaper. This, I'm telling you, this is something that I did years ago, and I made a ton of wallpaper. There are companies, the Maya, Ro the, um, Maya Romanoffs of the world. Um, there's some other uh, companies that are doing wall coverings like this. They sell it by the yard, and it's very, very expensive. So I'm showing you how to be able to get this look yourself very, very simply. All right, so you're just going to trowel it on like this. You want to put it on thicker. You don't want to see the texture from it and then allow it to dry. I would probably let it dry overnight. Is everybody with me? All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I just mixed up my Venetian plaster about the consistency of sour cream. And I'll kind of come back over it and just kind of soften it just a little bit as I work my way around. All right, so you've got first coat Venetian plaster. So we're going to set this aside and I've got one that has already dried. So here it is. Now, like I said, I really wish this was just a little bit thicker, 
but I had an issue um, earlier. I had been working on several things and I just need to be able to let it dry. So my plaster's dried. Look at this gorgeous matte finish. Is that not yummy? Gosh, it's just like a, it's just a canvas. And you can stretch this if you want. You can stretch this and use this on something to actually paint. You can use our stencils on it. Um, this could become a piece of art. You can apply this to furniture, but I love doing wall coverings with it too. All right, so now I'm gonna take my Toscana Milk Paint, and I am working in Scandinavian Gray, and I'm gonna mix up just a little bit. This comes in a dry form, but it lasts forever, just like the Venetian plaster. We keep it in the dry form because literally it has no shelf life. Once you mix it with water, it does have a shelf life. Now, unlike the Venetian plaster, you can, um, you can put a lid on it and a little bit of water, um, put a little water on it, then your lid, and that Venetian plaster will be good forever. The milk paint, on the other hand, is only has a shelf life of about two weeks. So, I've got my Scandinavian gray, and I am mixing this up. Theo says people. So sorry, guys. I'm stirring this up. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because it's kind of gotten thin. I don't want it too thin. You want it when you're mixing your milk paint, you'd like to have one part water to one part paint. So can you hear that sound? That's the granules in my paint. I really need to make sure that's really good and stirred up. He is misbehaving today, Dad. I can put this into a, um, a jar and shake it up. I usually will make my milk paint the night before, that way I don't have any granules in it. So now I'm just gonna take a sponge brush. And I'm, I realize I'm gonna probably have to have my hair dryer, Michelle. I'm gonna put this on here, because I'm gonna need to be able to show them. And I'm gonna brush this on. Now, something that you're gonna notice, when you're applying milk paint to plaster, what's gonna happen? It's gonna suck it up really fast. So you've gotta work fast. Look at that, you can already see, it's gonna suck right into that marble dust and that lime. I'll overlap just a little bit cool thing about it is it's going to have just such a, a gorgeous natural finish. You're just going to love it. And I am kind of scrubbing it, but I only want you to go in one direction. Don't go in crisscrosses because it will suck right down into the plaster and I'm not going to like it. Neither are you. You're going to want it to be just a vertical surface. Go up and down and it'll, it'll dry out. Have we got any sandpaper? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm being real bossy, aren't I? I'm just on here. I, believe it or not, I get real excited about showing you stuff like this because this is a game changer. Any more than that? No, that's perfect, thank you. All right, so now I wanna dry this down. You can see how my granules my granules are kind of coming up because I could still hear them when I was stirring it. I needed just a little bit more time in order to uh, make sure that they were good and dry. So I'm gonna hit it with my hair dryer just really quickly. So you can see the color that it dries down to. Look at the back. So that was where I put my plaster down. If you're just now popping on, please go back and watch the replay. We're doing some Venetian plaster. Um, they, a lot of times, if you'll see this, and let me, let, me, let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. These companies that are, and they're great companies, that are selling jute. They, call it, they say jute, but it's burlap. 
that are selling wall coverings like this, and a lot of times they'll have designs on it. Guys, a room out of this will literally cost ten to $15,000. Look at this. Is this fab? But this can be so fabulous as pillows. It can be fabulous if you want to be able to put it on a piece of furniture. Look at this. Does that make your heart sing? It does mine. Um, look at this. Love -ha -ha it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, I've done pillows out of this before. Um, at the same technique that I'm showing you and gilded them and they were fab. Um, would it work with tinted gesso? Hmm. I need to understand your question, Gretchen. Can you tint the gesso? Yes. Plaster. I like plaster. Here, where I'm coming from, you guys, when I'm teaching you this, y'all know that I worked in a bodega in Florence, Italy, and I'm wanting to teach you and understand um, the process on this. Now, I'm going to, um, I didn't like the granules that I had in that, so I'm hitting it just a little bit. But I'm going to tell you my, let me show you. Hold on. I'm going to turn this down. All right. So, I'm going to lightly sand this. What's happening? What's happening? Look at this. Look what's coming through. I can see. I can see my burlap. I can see the texture. That's okay. I don't want you to go crazy at this point because I don't want to see a whole lot of that. Okay? Now, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to take one of my stencils. These are some of my stencils from a maker studio. And I love the berries and the branch. Look at the detail on that. It almost looks like wood cutting. And I'm going to lay this down here because I'm acting like if this was a piece of wall covering that I was making. It has some adhesion. And I'm going to take this chocolate chalk art. This is from my sister company, Maker Studio. And I'm going to dip it into the chalk art like this. It's a paste, but it's still calcium carbonate. It's still chalk. And I'm going to go on top of this just a little. Now, in a perfect world, if we were all here together and we had a couple of hours together and I was teaching you, I would come back on top of this. I would let it dry. And I would come back on top of this with some size my gosh, this is too much. This is like too much. I'm loving this. My gosh, this is so fun. All right, so hold on. Let's lay this down. Because like if we've got a repeated pattern, let's lay this down. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, let's just see. Here's the benefit. Guys, with quarantine, we can be inside. We don't have to feel guilty that there's a bazillion places we've got to go and do. We can just create to our heart's content. I just wish y'all were here so I could be teaching you. Look at this. But you get the gist. You get the gist. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna set this aside because I'm, I can wash this. I can wash my stencil in water and reuse it. Now, I need to let these dry for just a second, so I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer. It'll dry very, very quickly. But in reality, what I wanna do is I wanna come back and I, wa I wanna do silver on top of this because I wanna lay it back down. I wanna set it to where this chocolate I really want to have it to where this chocolate design that I've done has the chocolate underneath it and the silver on top. That's what I would really love to do. Are you loving it? Okay, hold on. I can't see you. Are you loving it? I would love. We're gonna have we're gonna have a session to where we can have you come to Memphis. Look at this. Is that is that fab? Do you love it? Had you ever thought about putting it on top of burlap with gesso and milk paint? Oh my gosh, it's fab, isn't it? Okay. All right, so now let me show you the fun part. Let's turn this down again. Watch this. Now, I need to make sure it's dry. Now, in reality, I need to let my milk paint dry overnight, but watch this. So now I'm going to crease this burlap like this. Guys, share this video. Share the love, and then that way your name will go in for a drawing, and I'm going to send you, I tell you what, you know what else I'm going to send you? 
I'm going to send you the stencil that I just used. So you need to share this so your name can go for the drawing. I'm going to send you some Venetian plaster and the stencil. All right, I love that. Love giving away stuff. All right, so look at this. So I'm rolling this up. And as I'm rolling it, I'm kind of crunching it. This is why I want you to put it on fairly thick. The thicker you put on the gesso, the thicker and the better crack you're gonna get. If I put it on kind of thick, then literally some of it will come off now, and which is what I love. I'm not liking this right now because I'm pushing it. It's not dry because it's still kind of wet, so I feel the moisture and it's, I'm not gonna have it falling off as much as I like. Let's unroll it. Now, I want you to turn it the opposite direction. Fold this down like this. And look at how I'm kind of squeezing it as I'm going. Are y'all having fun? Thanks so much for sharing. Okay. I want you to keep it the same direction. Now, if I let this dry overnight, my cracking is gonna be much prettier. Now, can you, can you kind of see it? See how it's kind of starting to kind of flake off? And here's the other thing that will happen. My design, I'll, start, I'll kind of start to lose some of my design, which is very desirable. And then I'll start to get it to where it'll start to flake off. Look at this, isn't that fab? Don't you love it? So this is one that I had done earlier. And I'll be honest with you, I love this. If you have, if you're fortunate enough to have a beach house, is that like, don't you love that? I love the reverse of it. This is the back side of it. How fab would that be? Just to be able, let's, hold on, help me Hannah. Let's just see something. Help me Hannah. I've never done this before, let's try this. Oh my gosh, never tried this. Never tried this, let's, let's see what this does. Oh my gosh, this is the back side. Using my chalk art, using my stencil. Let's just see what this looks like, I have no idea. But this is how, when I tell my students in my old world finishing course, yes, oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Oh my gosh, Michelle, you've got to come look at this. Gosh, this is the back side. This is the back side because what's so cool is what a, what a cute table runner, what cute placemats, what, oh my gosh, is this the cutest? Love it. I love the back. Oh my gosh. It's yummy. So, not to take y'all off, but I just want you to be able to see how fun it can be. Look at that. Now, that's the back of what I was working on earlier. Isn't that fab? Do y'all love that? I love that. So, but this is what I wanted to show you today. I want you to be able to see how you can use the plaster on the burlap, or we call it jute. That's the fancy word. And how you can come back. Now, I would even sometimes, if I want to add metallic, I'll dry brush mica powder. <laughs> so silly. I'm so silly. Um, I'll dry brush mica powders and some wax on here. Um, you can, you can take it to a whole new level. I'm just telling you, but I'm just telling you, this gets me excited. Is that the best? Would that not be the, would that not be the cutest pillow ever? And this is the back of what just peeks through. <laughs> Love that. And if you want to be able to get an acrylic box, and be able to frame this, be able to do some pictures and things in it. Um, this is fabulous. I just, I love working with jute. I love working with gesso. I love working with the melt paints and being able to get so many great looking finishes out of doing this. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I had a happy mistake today and just playing to be able to show you. Main thing is to realize when you're being creative, you wanna have fun. And those happy accidents can turn into some of the most fabulous finishes that you will ever create. So. Share this video, your name will go on for a drawing, and I'm gonna be sending the lucky winner some plaster and the stencil, so that way you can turn around and create this in your house. And then I want you to go on the before and after group and share it. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Um, and you can antique it with the antiquing glaze because it has the milk paint on it. You don't have to seal it if you don't want to, or you can come back and, um, add a little bit of wax to it. I do that as well. So maybe this needs to be to be continued. Have a great weekend, everybody. Love you guys. Bye-bye.